జై శ్రీమన్ నారాయణ టుడే వి విల్ రివ్యూ చాప్టర్ ఫోర్టీన్ శ్లోక ఫోర్టీన్ ఫిఫ్టీన్ అండ్ సిక్స్టీన్ అండ్ విల్ కంటిన్యూ ఫర్దర్ ఓకే సో ఫోర్టీన్ బద్రి గారు చాప్టర్ ఫోర్టీన్ గుణత్రయ విభాగ యోగ శ్లోక ఫోర్టీన్ యదా సత్వే ప్రవృద్ధేతు ప్రళయం యాతి దేహ భృత్ తదోత్తమ విదాం లోక నమలాన్ ప్రతిపద్యతే శ్లోకాలోని అలా ఉంది జయశ్రీ మన చాప్టర్ ఫోర్టీన్ శ్లోక ఫోర్టీన్ సమ్మరీ సుప్రీం లార్డ్ సైడ్ ఇఫ్ ఇఫ్ ఎంబోడీడ్ సెల్ఫ్ it is resolution when sattva quality is dominant then he attains ignorance free groups of beings who know the highest jai shri narayana that's good uh, any questions any so here we and we have sattva quality uh, so you get a rebirth but you get in the highest uh, i think that's what he's saying right i think uh, yeah Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, so basically they will take birth uh, in a group of people yeah. groups of beings usually i mean you can yeah. associate with either uh, humans or uh, devatas devatas right um, yeah. yeah you know which uh, who have the you know the knowledge of the self and they are practicing in you know uh, getting the um knowledge of the self basically or self, or uh, to become um self realized okay yeah. so they are on the path to get the self realization so we will automatically be put in that path we don't have to struggle to yeah. get that quality to i mean to get the uh, self realization otherwise yeah. it becomes really difficult to get on to this path so that's why it is uh, good to have the sattva quality dominant at the time of leaving so it doesn't matter as we discussed last week it doesn't matter what we did in the past yes. as as long as we change ourselves and uh, be on the path to become sattva uh, sattva dominant uh, then at the time of leaving uh, the body if we are sattva dominant yes. then we will again get a birth uh yeah which will be on the path towards self realization we don't have to start yeah. in a backwards from, from, yeah. Yeah. yeah and also okay. the previous janmas uh, previous but uh, karmic bondage right is uh, influencing us only on the current birth right no it will influence um, you know every birth like uh, it's not like uh, uh, whatever uh, i'm experiencing in this life mm-hmm. it is only dependent on my previous life need not be uh, it could be dependent on any of the previous lives the karma karmic bondage that i'm carrying from the past billions of lives that I, you know that could be part of it is assigned to this particular life Mm-hmm. so no matter what i do i cannot escape it <laughs> right yeah so uh, we are supposed to experience those so that's why even good people uh, have uh, difficulties problems issues i mean you know people say oh he's a great uh, devotee is a bhakta and why is he having all kinds of problems because he is carrying mm-hmm. the uh karmic bondage from the previous life he is uh, he is on the right path in this life but whatever uh karmas are assigned to be experienced in this life they have to go through no matter what uh they do in this life right mm-hmm. so i mean there's a great example that um, so if someone uh, was smoking for many years um then and then they stop right um if uh, the lungs are affected right even after stopping uh, the smoking they may get the 
um, you know, they may get the cancer, lung cancer or some other cancer, right? So at the time the cancer comes, they may not be smoking at that time, but because they were smoking for so many years in the past, their lungs got affected. At the time when they stopped smoking, probably they did not have the cancer, right? But over a period of time, they, they get the cancer. So, I mean, that is uh, just a you know, worldly example so that we can understand whatever we did in the past, uh, we will be carrying uh, with us. And uh, those effects, effects will take place in this life. Okay, even though we we may be pure, sattvic, and you know, really devoted, all that, it really doesn't matter because when we are taking this birth, uh, certain karmic bondages, uh, certain karmic records are associated, assigned to this particular life, which we have to go through. So um, what we can do is uh, we can reduce the impact of those if we, um, you know, again, uh, Sri Swamiji gives an example, like if uh, it is going to rain, it will, and, uh, you know, and we have to go out, um, there are two options, like we go out in the rain and get drenched completely. So we do not have any protection. So we are affected by the rain. Or we have an umbrella, we carry an umbrella with us, which will protect us from the rain. Um, so we are, we are not able to stop the rain, but we can have a protection um, to reduce the impact of the rain on us. Same way, if rain is like, a, you know, the uh, karmic records assigned to us in this particular life to be experienced, good or bad, whatever it is, uh, if uh, we want to get protection, we need, uh, we, we can develop our life in this, you know, in, in this life, develop our qualities in this life, which will uh, protect us from those, uh, especially the negative effects of the karmic records. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking like, if if I'm a sattvic person in this Janma, yeah. that means I've been a little bit sattvic in the previous one also, right? That but is true, because, uh, because see, um, if you uh, really look at this statement, right? If I'm uh, sattvic uh, dominant at the time of leaving, uh, leaving the body in this life, I will again take a birth in, the, in, a, uh, in a family who are sattvic in nature, primarily sattvic in nature, right? So that means what if I am, if I am sattvic today, that means previous birth I was kind of sattvic and or if I am taking birth in a sattvic family uh, or who are putting me in the path towards uh, uh, sattva quality dominant then it must have been uh, I must have been uh, in a family you know I must have been having the sattva dominant quality in my previous life yeah so the reason even though uh, I'm born in a sattvic person uh, because the pains, the reason for the pains or tragedies in this life, say, maybe due to, because no one is perfect, whatever we did, something wrong. So it's all accumulated, accumulative. Yeah. Yes. You okay. know, so many trillions of lives that we are uh, going through. Every life uh, we carry the karma. You know. See, anything that we do, thinking that it is for ourselves, right? And that itself is papam. I, I want to experience it by myself. Okay, I did it. Uh, this is for me. These are uh, because of me. You know, I need to enjoy this. These are all my belongings, my possessions. So once, uh, if we have that kind of, uh, we may be doing good. I mean, we are not killing people or we are not uh, hurting anybody. But uh, when we are having the, you know, that Even part, okay then we are, uh, uh, yeah, so we are carrying that karmic uh, records with us. Then, uh, you know, we will be assigned uh, those karmic records. So uh, one, when we have trillions of lives, right, and we are carrying those karmic records with us, all those records cannot be assigned to just one life, right? So it must have been that 
maybe a set of previous karmic uh, previous lives karmic records are assigned to me in this life uh, not all of them but a few and then um, you know i have to experience them there is one thing that if we are following the uh, um, karma yoga you know uh, if we are following the practices in you know in like in summary in practices whatever we have in bhagavad gita right when we uh, practice uh, these principles we are not only getting uh, we are not only not getting the new karmic bondage we are actually cleaning mm-hmm. our karmic records also which are mm-hmm. not assigned to us okay yeah. so in this life we have some records are not assigned to us we can clean those as well okay so the lesser karmic uh, uh, bondage records uh, are uh, you know are there with us the better our future lives will be so mm-hmm. as we reduce our karmic bondage uh, the life that we are going to get uh, next it becomes easy for us to focus on paramatma like why some people are not able to focus on paramatma or god or you know in, in step lower is uh, self realization why we mm-hmm. people are not able to do that is because of a lot of karmic uh, you know bondage uh, they are carrying with them right so it would mm-hmm. not let them uh, go into the path of self realization or god realization that easily okay mm-hmm. it becomes easy for some people it is difficult for others it is because again because of the karmic records that they are carrying so the lesser karmic records that we have with us uh, um you know we will be more likely to have a, you know be on a path towards self realization and god realization mm-hmm. yeah okay thank you okay okay Okay, Sloka 15. Pusha Gala? Yeah. Gunatre Vibhaga Yoga, Sloka 15. Rajasi Pralayam Gatva Karma Sangishu Jayate Tadha Pralinas Tamasi Moodhayo Nishu Jayate Say Sriman Narayana, Chapter 14, Sloka 15, Summary. The Supreme Lord said, one is born among those who work with attachment for the sake of fruits after attaining dissolution. Jiva leaves the body. Rajas, while Rajas is dominant. Similarly, one is born among those species who are lacking intelligence dissolution. Jiva leaves the body. Tamas, while Tamas is dominant. Jai Sri Manara. Yes, Manarena. Yeah, the sentence is uh, unfortunately is little yeah, bit uh, little... jumbled, right? Let me explain uh, uh, quickly. So, um, um, so while tam- while rajas is dominant, when jiva leaves the body, okay, then that one is born among those who work with attachment. so they are focused on activities and those activities they do with attachment for the sake of results or fruits okay so that is rajas okay sattva people will take birth in um, groups of uh, beings um, who are having the highest knowledge or self realization knowledge so they will continue that journey of self realization rajas dominant people when they live uh, you know after attaining dissolution that means when jiva leaves the body when we cannot say dissolution means atma is you know atma cannot be uh, dissolved right atma does not die atma cannot be disintegrated so dissolution here means the death again atma does not have death it's only for the body so when the let's say when a person uh, with da- rajas dominant quality uh, dies so jiva leaves uh, that jiva leaves the body then they will take birth in a family uh, who are focused on working for the sake of results 
okay and uh, same way when uh, a thomas dominant person okay leaves uh, so dies that means that jiva leaves that body thomas body um then they are born among those species who are lacking intelligence so basically um they will go down and down and down so they will go from human species to i mean this will again come in the next uh, slokas but they will go from humans to animals to insects to birds and you know like that they will go keep going down and down and it becomes very difficult for them to catch up okay so for uh, people uh, who are rajas dominant they will be taking birth again and again in the middle i mean that's again next loka but uh, they will um they will have to continue to take birth and okay and they will be working towards uh, uh possessions you know the and uh, for the sake of results uh, for the materialistic gains you know basically they will be focused on materialistic things not on the self self that is the uh, atma okay i think we discussed this in uh, previous chapters right um yeah suppose i will be born as a because of my tamas i'll be born as a uh, animal next life right mm-hmm. uh, but i remember you said we even still we have a chance for the moksha path right how how is the animal going to by yeah i mean b- animal by itself cannot they uh, be see none of us by ourselves cannot get liberated only when uh, when you know paramatma's blessings are there with us we can be liberated right mm-hmm. i mean how we how are we on the path we have to be on the path towards self realization god realization in order for paramatma to give us okay uh, obviously uh, god cannot simply you know have a lottery and then just pick a few people a few people in the sense few uh you know viruses and uh, birds and animals and say okay i give you uh, liberation that doesn't it doesn't work that way right mm-hmm. there are certain rules and you know rules of this universe the god has laid out those rules and very clear in bhagavad gita so what are all the different paths towards uh, uh, liberation so only these people are on the path towards liberation he said right so the the those are uh, basically the highest is uh, you know having god as uh, the only goal and uh, do everything as service to god um with uh, as a kind karya man means uh, as a service to god if we do it then we are on the path towards self realization if let us say i am Uh, you know rajasik or uh, tamasik then obviously god is not going to simply say oh, okay it's fine i can give you moksha however it is not stopping him i mean if god wants to give moksha he can give moksha to anyone including birds animals insects anybody right but there are certain rules uh, they have to uh, i know so we have to be on the path towards uh, god only then even after you know so so it doesn't guarantee the liberation but uh, when we are on the path towards god he will give us a liberation right so technically any jiva right in any body can be liberated from that body itself irrespective of how much karmic bondage it is carrying okay technical means uh, god is capable of giving liberation um to anyone yes they can get liberated from any body but we have to be on the path towards god in order for god to give us liberation okay If, if, so if my name is not on the list i'll be going down uh, in the birth only right like you know suppose next year my like you know if like you said it's ultimately god has to decide yeah. um you know it doesn't matter which body you are in you will yeah. get moksha but yeah. 
if that sankalpam from god is not there uh, suppose i am an animal next janma i will be animal forever i think yes that's exactly the problem so that's why we yeah. should not be rajas or tamas right? right yeah we have to be sattvic dominant in order for yeah. us to be on the right path towards mm -hmm. uh, liberation yeah the more we are on rajasic and tamasic uh, dominant then mm -hmm. we'll be going downwards only right okay? yeah. um so the, basically you know by our own efforts we cannot clear our karmic bondage right no matter yeah. what we do no matter how much sattvic we are no matter how much devoted we are you know in this particular life our karmic records cannot be erased completely by our own efforts mm -hmm. but when we are on the path towards real uh, liberation what god has uh, uh, assured us is no matter which body you are in okay no matter mm -hmm. where we are born mm -hmm. no matter you know it's not like you have to be born, you have to become an american president then only i'm going to give you uh, liberation no mm -hmm. <laughs> so there's no such thing like uh, you have to be you know the uh, the high priest in uh, uh you know in a particular uh, temple or something like that it it doesn't have to be it doesn't have, like, yeah. so we all can asp aspire to become liberated in this life mm. itself mm. Mm. okay so for our aspiration we can definitely aspire i mean we can definitely pray to god for liberation in whatever body we are in whatever may be activity that we are doing we need not be uh, priests we need not be doing you know you know whatever vedic chanting 24 hours a day and things like that whatever we may be doing but if we are on the path towards liberation god will give us liberation okay mm -hmm. so that is one second is uh, even if i i am in that path towards i mean you, let us say i am chanting uh, you know vedas every day continuously throughout my life still it does not guarantee uh me to get liberation uh unless mm -hmm. god's uh, will is there god's blessings are there right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. so those two and then but i mean if uh, if we say that you, okay no matter which uh, whatever body you are in god can liberate you it doesn't apply to anybody i mean he can technically do it but if uh, if we are rajasic or tamasic we cannot expect you know we can almost uh, be certain that so you know we will never be uh, liberated because he already told in the previous you know who uh, there are four kinds of people uh, right and uh, so uh, gnanis and uh, um mm, uh, aishwaryarthi uh, uh, yeah so if i am if i want liberation the that is the highest then uh, if i want uh, self realization the next level uh, the third is um ardhardi uh the, you know people who are uh, seeking money or uh, you know um, any materialistic gains in this particular life so the, we are we all these people are praying to god but the one who is mokshardi is the one who is uh, Uh, closer to getting liberation from god than the other two he said yeah artarda artardi jignasu gnani yeah yeah jignasu yes jignasu is the self realized yeah a person who is uh, looking for self realization um and uh, um gnani is the one who is uh, uh, yeah that's uh, okay. also seeking god yeah yeah seeking god so it's not like we can do whatever we want but still pray to god oh god give me uh, you know <laughs> liberation but still we want uh, you know all materialistic gains everything i want to do it for myself uh, you know not as service to god i don't pray to god uh, i don't think of god at any time i, I always think that uh, whatever i am doing it's my own abilities i don't differentiate first of all i don't even differentiate uh, uh, between body and uh, atma i think that i am body so if i am 
doing all these things and still asking just because uh, i read somewhere oh god can give me uh, liberation uh, and if i can uh, if i ask him he will he will be giving yeah we can ask him but maybe he will will you know that fact that we are asking him uh, for liberation maybe he will give us good points right we may be uh, you know changing in our own life in this life itself if god is uh, uh, blessing us right or uh we may be getting a, a better birth in our next life where we will not have that ignorance that oh no matter what i do i can still get liberation that is kind of ignorance we will be on the path towards uh, first we need to prepare ourselves we need to be on the right path then only god, god can give uh, you know liberation to us so the telugu saying you know aragande ammaina petta is not applicable here i think no we have to ask yeah okay. no we have to i mean uh, see uh, <clears throat> we we will be asking for again uh, this is bhakti yoga and uh, you know going into bhakti yoga so we will be asking him that uh, god give me the you know give me the energy okay, support to- me in serving you Okay. Mm. Sir, uh, that is my goal. I want to reach you. Okay. Make use me as an instrument. Okay. I'm mm. just an instrument in your hands. Uh, okay. And my my happiness is only you, nothing else, in this world. Okay. Whether you give me liberation right now in this life or next life, it doesn't matter for me. Mm. i am completely surrendering to you use me as an instrument till whatever time i am alive i mean i have this body okay um, you know i will i would like to do service to you i mean i would like to serve all beings as service to you that's a great uh, you know uh, great message from sri swami ji uh, it's a basically summary of bhagavad gita so serve all beings as service to god i'm going to serve you okay um and then whether uh, you give me liberation I, i seek liberation because i want to be with you always but i i you know i just want to serve you that's all so if we if we have that if we are thinking of uh, paramatma each and every second mm-hmm. but of course we are doing all our duties that are assigned to us in this life while doing those duties also we think of him as a person who is supporting us we think of him when we see anything around us and then when we do any activity we do it as a service to god for him by him uh and uh, you know whatever result we may get is because of him and we can we are experiencing that result because of him right so in every uh, thing that we are uh, when we are doing when we are experiencing we are always remembering him then we are we are on the path towards getting liberation yeah so professor garu sure um uh, i know we're talking mainly during our life time or, or during death right so i have question uh, if if uh, during uh, if if baby is in still mom's womb uh, and um irrespective of how the mom and dad are um if is that I mean assume that maybe like months or eight months or that is i don't know the full this thing but i'm just kind of saying that asking oh if he, that baby is listening to someone chanting bhagavad gita or something uh, mm-hmm. with the chance that it will get sattvic some kind of sattvic quality i will talk about that at any any slokas um you ask a question right on name is going to yeah if 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 some pregnant mom and if it's mm-hmm. that is a 9 months so it's almost like about to deliver baby in few weeks right yeah you respect yes. the whole parents are right yeah. um, so rajas that doesn't matter yeah right? yes a uh, uh, very good question <laughs> okay <laughs> so 
so basically as i was saying right we no matter what our karmic records are right we get protection when we do some things okay so though i mean we will be very fortunate if uh, let us say the baby by not by their own efforts right because baby is not putting an application saying hey people come here and chant bhagavad gita or uh, ramayana or uh, you know other uh, scriptures right uh, because i am i am in the tummy why don't you come and uh, chant they are not asking right so it is uh, um, uh, due to the again uh, due to the uh, previous records that they may have which are enabling other people to chant uh, those scriptures for for uh, the baby in the womb and uh, even though the baby may not understand doesn't know the, you know sanskrit telugu whatever language right if the baby uh, doesn't understand uh, the those uh, mantras you know those uh, sounds have um, the medicinal quality right so the baby so medicinal quality not just in terms of uh, curing the you know curing the diseases uh, it it also cleans up the you know uh, cleans up the records so uh, one of the things you know if you remember uh, one of the uh, previous chapters what lord krishna said the first step towards becoming you know god realized what is the first step karma phala tyagam karma phala tyagam right even before that how how do you get karma phala tyagam if i don't even know <laughs> what is the first uh, most basic step that anybody would have to do Um, surrender to god no aman okay aman is madam batu masra ka that is all will come uh, so basic step is the listening um, yeah yeah listening is one of the things uh, 13 chapter last uh, yeah yeah, yeah. you said you can mm-hmm. listening also that's the thing one thing is said right that's... so first step is listening okay mm-hmm. okay you may not even no god you may not know sanskrit you may not know, you may not be even willing initially okay just you, i mean you you are totally skeptical you are totally like uh, you know you hate god let us say okay <laughs> okay uh, yeah. but but if we start listening they have the medicinal quality of cleaning the record see the re- reason why we were having those other i mean either uh, we have we are hating or we are averse to uh, molding ourselves um we are uh, not interested in the right path we don't like this what is all this uh, you know satva rajas tamas and you know I, i mean we don't even know first of all even if let us say we come across uh, some text here and there or uh, some people uh, keep saying that oh you can get liberation and i don't know if somebody is going to listen to this recording later but uh, so we we may get some uh, some idea right but if we do not listen to the elders to the wise people okay uh, the scriptures and uh, you know one of the scriptures is bhagavad gita so if we do not listen bhagavad gita then it doesn't clean the records now if you listen to bhagavad gita whether uh, intentionally or unintentionally it will have the effect okay so the baby in your example so the baby uh, in the womb um, when the baby listens to the bhagavad gita or uh, ramayana actually they say that uh, uh we ch- we have to chant um, ramayana um, when when uh, babies you know babies in the womb uh, that is going to have a positive effect the baby uh, will get the positive effect right so uh, obviously i think the the principle uh, applies there the baby doesn't know by itself baby doesn't understand anything but because the baby is listening to these sounds those sounds will have the effects on the baby and the baby uh, baby's uh, records will be eliminated karmic records will be eliminated which are 
let's say if, if they're negative in nature, those negative uh, uh, records are eliminated, right? I mean, cleaned, you know? Mm -hmm. So they become uh, uh, more uh, interested. So, they, so when, uh, after the baby takes birth, you know, and then without their knowing, if let us say, I want the baby to chant uh, Gita, they may be able to do it quickly, easily. You don't have to force them to do it, right? So they are basically, um, uh, they get the samskara by listening to the um, uh, Bhagavad Gita and other scriptures. I think uh, that's true. And uh, of course, we have the great example of uh, Prahlada. Uh, when Prahlada is in, uh, has a, has a um, baby in the womb, uh, he got the Narayana Mantra and uh, you know, he became the great uh, nanny. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. Jay Shriman Narayana, this is Rajni. I want to share a personal experience here since this question is asked. Sure. Yeah, can I? Sure. So I remember my son is five year old now. I had some complications before, like, but uh, with this uh, time when he was, I um, mean, you know, I was expecting him around six months in the some medical. Um, they have scanning and all they, they they told there is some problem with the baby they need to do further tests the tests are just going to uh, tell what, what, what how, how complicated it is but it's not going to help anyway baby so we just mm -hmm. said we are not going ahead with anything and i was listening to sundra kanda even swamiji also in the he was there uh, here doing parayana i got to go there few days and i was listening and uh, Later, Ram Raksha Stotra, he suggested I should listen every day. Mm -hmm. And I was doing that and I had faith. And my, my baby he was born perfectly fine, uh, no medical issues. So, you know, this increased my faith more. So I thought I should share this personal experience of mine with you oh, all. Very good. Very good. Yeah, very nice. I mean, so wonderful. You know, we, uh, we have faith and uh, we practice it with faith. Uh, it gives us uh, a great benefit. And uh, definitely true. I mean, there's, uh, thank you for sharing. It is, it is definitely true that uh, the chantings will definitely have a uh, um, good result on us. And of course, you know, uh, Sri Swamiji is now doing the Lavatarakam, uh, Sri Vishnu Sasnama chanting, you know, and uh, <laughs> You know, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna uh, mantra um, last uh, uh, couple of months, right? And uh, to uh, protect us uh, in this time of, uh, you know, Corona. And definitely helps, uh, you know, all this listening to the Vishnu Sasnama, Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, you know, all these uh, scriptures, powerful scriptures, listening to them. Uh, knowingly or unknowingly, I mean, if you listen to them, they will protect us. And of course, if we listen to it with faith, with the, I mean, meaning, right? Then it increases the effort, eff effect, basically. Um, so that's great. Thank you. Yeah, yes, you are right. Okay, 16. Full chant only, 16. Yeah, I can chant only. Sure. Gunatraya Vibhaga Yoga, Sloka 16. Karmana Sukrutasya Huhu. Satvikam nirmalam phalam, rajasastu phalam dukham, agnyanam tamasah phalam. Jeshimanarena, the Supreme Lord said, the wise say the result of work done well with sattva is free from misery, the result of rajas is misery, and the result of tamas is ignorance. Jai Shri Manar. Jai Shri Manar.
Um, any questions on this one? I did not read the summary and the following. I'm just reading it now, so I should have read it before. Probably, I think he explained. Uh, you are giving reference to the previous chapter here, right? Yeah, thirteen chapter. I mean, all the slokas. There is no inconsistency anywhere. Yeah, uh, that's a great. Uh, I mean, uh, somehow uh, you know people get confused uh, uh, if they don't really understand, but. Um, the there is absolutely good link between one chapter and another chapter, no inconsistency at all. Um, so, um, so Atma, I mean, just a quick summary, right? Atma does not have the three qualities, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas. Okay, Atma is us, right? Jivatma, Purusha, uh, self. Okay, um, so it does not have these qualities. These qualities are inherently, uh, you know, belonging to the nature or matter or prakriti. Okay, but Atma is the enjoyer of the gunas in the embodied state. So. So Atma does not have those qualities, but whatever is uh, um, the result of the work done with those qualities, Atma is enjoying means uh, not like uh, you, know, you know dancing and <laughs> all those things. Enjoying means that experiencing. Okay. So so the result of these qualities goes to they go to um, Atma. So the the result of work done. Uh, so because uh, you know how we can say that uh, result um, is going to our atma because atma is either taking birth in a sattvic family or in a family that is uh, you know focused on doing work for the sake of materialistic gains or in a you know in a uh, group of uh, species that are tamas, right? I mean, Atma got affected if it is taking different birth, right? So the, the karmic records are going to be different based on the quality, um, but the quality itself is not coming from Atma itself. It is uh, Nirgunam, okay? But it is the Guna Bhokta. So it is the one that is uh, experiencing the um, results of the Gunas, okay? And uh, the guna sangha um, attachment to these qualities uh, from prakriti that is giving the uh, sat asat yoni janma. So it is giving the higher or lower births. Okay. Um, and uh, we also need to understand that um, they are inherent, the sattva rajas and tamas are the qualities of prakriti. Okay. Um, so these uh, qualities are the agents of actions and not Atma. So Prakriti, these qualities, which are, um, you know, which are qualities of Prakriti are not only the agents of uh, actions, it is also the agent for higher or lower births and the diversity in bodies. Okay, so in 29, 1329, he said, whoever sees all actions are being done, uh, done by the Prakriti alone, and likewise sees the Atma as not the agent, that person really sees. Okay, that is the one who is uh, really realizing the self. So we are, the Atma is not the agent of actions, Agent of actions are the qualities. The qualities belong to Prakriti. So the Prakriti is the agent of actions and uh, not the Atma. So Lord Krishna in this uh, sloka is saying, what is the result You know, when we do any activity while one of the qualities is dominant? See, one very important thing is this is dominant or dominating 
quality, right? Um, so at any point of time, one quality is uh, dominating. Um, that is the one that is determining the, the result. Okay, we all have all three qualities, but only one is dominating at any time. Um, so what is the result? So when we do the work with Sattva quality, that gives us, uh, that makes us pure, that is uh, you know, free from misery because it cleans the karmic bondage, right? Um, so what is work done well? There is a, he said, uh, work done well, you know, that is, uh, um, uh, Sukrutasya, right? So it, if what is work done well means, uh, you know, we are doing it as service to God without motivation or expectation for the results. Okay, everything is for God um, and I want to, you know, I'm doing it as service to God. It is not for me. We don't do anything uh, because I want it. So I want it is no more I mean, it, it will be removed from our dictionary. Um, <clears throat> and it is difficult, right? <laughs> uh, so whenever we say I want it and, you know, and I am doing it, it increases karmic bondage. So that is what is Rajas. And uh, Tamas is basically, when we do it with ignorance, it basically makes it really, really worse when we we get more ignorance. So I don't know um, some, you know, you may be aware of positive feedback loop and negative feedback loop. Have you heard those things? If uh, whoever has done electronics. Yeah, yeah positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Positive think... feedback, negative feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, when we read these things, our uh, slope, right? You know, you're going downwards. Mm -hmm. So, um when uh, when we are in a circle and each rotation actually actually makes it uh, uh, let us say plus 10 or minus 10 let us say okay so plus 10 is sattva so one rotation we go upwards by plus 10 points so positive feedback loop so next rotation because it's it's a circle cycle let us say so then again, we get 10 more points, 10 positive points, and then 10 positive points. So we are going upwards and upwards. Ten po you can either treat it as 10 positive points, uh, means getting, uh, or you can say 10 karmic bondages are cleaned up, right? You know, we are better off by 10, let us say. So that is sattva. In every, each and every life, we are uh, becoming better and better. It becomes easy and easy for us to uh, clean our karmic bondage. We'll be automatically getting the knowledge of the self uh, easily. We don't have to really struggle. Um, and uh, tamas is like a negative feedback loop. <laughs> so every cycle we get a uh, minus 10 points, let us say. So you go through one life, you got minus 10. We go through another life, I got minus 10 on top of it. But this is almost like in exponential. Like first time you get a we get a minus ten, second time we get minus hundred, third time we get minus one thousand points because uh, it builds ignorance. Build, ignorance builds on itself, so it is uh, going to be very dangerous. So this, uh, you know, tamas uh, is extremely bad because uh, it puts us in a path towards um, never, you know, coming back up, right? Um, so we might have been in those uh, scenarios, you know, but with uh, God's grace, Acharya's grace, some some great people might have, uh, you know, if let us say there is a, someone was asking a question, you know, like uh, there is a dog, uh, you know, it might, might be going to a temple and it probably, uh, uh, an acharya saw the dog with, you know, with blessing eyes. Okay, then it gets, uh, uh, you know, the next life will be better. That life, it can, you know, things won't change, but the next life, uh, it gets a chance to become better. Okay, so the God by itself, the the 
the dog by itself uh, didn't do anything great but because of the grace of uh, uh, acharya or uh, you know some wise people uh, it got the chance to be on the right path so we should be really lucky you know if we now the fact that uh, we we have uh, blessings from our acharya and getting this knowledge yeah this is one one of the things right we, which is making us uh, be on this right path towards uh, self realization god realization by our own efforts we won't be able to do it but because of acharya's blessings we are able to un, you know get this knowledge understand this knowledge and then uh, put it in practice and be on the path towards self realization and god realization so that is uh, that is putting us in the satvik yeah okay thank you anya yeah so thank you that's good um so we will start with uh, sloka 17 that's the first time we will be doing it so what i'll do is i will stop recording i hope uh, it will record again will record again um into the next file jay shri manarayana we want to stop recording yes